Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I wanna do a chanterelle thing. Uh, so Tropical Storm Debbie, which you may hear in the background, has been just blasting through my hometown of Raleigh, North Carolina. And it has turned our uh, already, you know, blossoming golden chanterelle mushrooms, which are very abundant in the summertime in the South. It has just uh, bloated them up into these monsters. So I wanted to share them with you uh, and also, you know, share what they look like sort of under more normal circumstances, which is a little bit more uh, dainty. And so, uh, and then of course, you know, sort of cover some of your basic identification features here. I want to start by saying, I believe this uh, to be specifically Cantharellus velutinus, which is a common species in the South. The Cantharellus genus uh, is basically like all of the chanterelles, including the ones that live in Europe, the ones that live on the West Coast. But uh, in the Eastern US, we do have a lot of ambiguity about who is who when it comes to the specific Cantharellus mushrooms. However, uh, Cantharellus velutinus is a mushroom that I am very familiar with insofar as it uh, grows abundantly in a lot of the places where I hang out. And it has this almost sort of velvety feel on the top of it. And uh, additionally, I want to point out this really cool feature, and this is not exclusive to Cantharellus velutinus and all kinds of caveats in place about, uh, you know, how many different species of this uh, genus there are. But in the south, you will find uh, chanterelle mushrooms that cluster and form these beautiful little, uh, you know, bouquets. And I want to point that out because a lot of uh, sort of beginning mushroom guides or guides that cover a wide swath of territory will uh, advise that um, chanterelles don't typically grow in clusters, which is true because many of the chanterelles that grow in the Northwest and on the West Coast and other places do not form these uh, little clusters. And from a safety perspective, the jack-o'-lantern mushroom, Omphalatus alludens, and uh, gosh, there's another, oh, Omphalatus oleris, uh, I believe is another one. Anyway, uh, these big honkin' orangey mushrooms that have decurrent gills, meaning gills that run down the stem, and they are toxic, not kill you toxic, but um, sometimes people will mistake them for chanterelles. And one of the signature features of your Omphalatus mushrooms is they grow in big honkin' clusters. So all that by way of saying some of our southern chanterelles have sort of unique behaviors uh, that can um, become difficult, especially if you're relying on guides and experiences uh, from other regions and places. That being said, it's pretty easy. Like if you're into um, learning wild mushroom hunting, this uh, mushroom is where you should start if you live in North Carolina and the Piedmont uh, and gosh, I mean many, many places for a lot of reasons. First of all, it is really easy to get help identifying a chanterelle mushroom. And so uh, from my perspective, like even though this is a very, very easy mushroom to become familiar with, comfortable with, it is very tasty, blah, blah, blah. Being able to just reach out to almost anyone on the internet who is mildly reputable and saying, I want to verify that this is what I have on my hands, you will get lots and lots of good validation. And that is super helpful and important if you're just getting started. Uh, if only from a confidence perspective, this harkens back to my very first chanterelle hunt, uh, which was also a really bad first date. There was no second date, however, um, I really enjoyed finding a lot of Pacific Northwest uh, chanterelle mushrooms, Cantharellus formosa specifically. Anyway, that was like my first moment of like, haha, mushrooms are super amazing. And you, dude, you're very nice. And thank you for suggesting this amazing activity. Uh, maybe we'll hang out some other time. But anyway, when I got my chanterelles home, I was very excited, but there was a lot less activity on the internet. And also I was a lot less uh, proficient in digging on the internet to verify my ID. So I compared it with books. I compared it with my experiences from eating wild chanterelles from friends. I was super confident that that's what I had. Nonetheless, I made a mushroom risotto. I ate it and I felt less than perfect the following morning. And so I called up my friends and I'm like, I think I may have poisoned you with supposed chanterelle mushrooms. And they're like, no, um, we did have some really, really terrible French red wine last night. And perhaps that is the source of your headache and bellyache. Anyway, 
long story short, chanterelle mushrooms are a really good place to start uh, for a lot of reasons. First of all, they are uh, really abundant, and so it's very easy to become familiar with them. They grow in the same place year after year. So this spot right here, uh, this is my 12th year collecting them right in this spot under this very specific oak tree. They also really like um, the ones that grow, you know, in the south and so forth. They really like this uh, muscadine. So the um, sort of uh, grape vines that you'll see hanging out on the ground. So for me, the habitat is like white or red oak and then muscadine. And uh, when you encounter them, they can be a lot of different colors, but the uh, golden chanterelle is sort of the most classic thing that you will see, and it's really, really distinctive. So let's go through the features. First of all, you have, and I've been pointing this at you for quite some time, what are called decurrent false gills. And so you have a lot of mushrooms that have true gills, and they're like deep and blade-like, and you can, you know, kind of uh, slough them off if you, you rip them sideways oftentimes. In the case of a chanterelle or a cantharellus mushroom, these are much more superficial and you can easily scrape them off the surface. One of the things that is also distinctive for cantharellus is that you will see uh, the sort of forking false gills. In the case of some of your, uh, you know, more uh, large and uh, I guess elaborate chanterelle species, uh, that sort of forking is really much more significant and some guides are like, it's like wrinkles. And in that case, this can become really confusing because they aren't wrinkles, they are more blade-like in appearance. And so that's just something to be aware of as far as the regional difference uh, between, you know, the mushrooms that you'll see in the south and the mushrooms you may see elsewhere. Another thing that's super um, easy to, or uh, a really good identification feature that will help you um, is the interior of the mushroom. So a lot of mushrooms, their context or what's going on in the inside is the same color as the outside or it can be hollow or floofy in the middle. But chanterelles are really distinctive for being nice and thick and firm and white, kind of like string cheese. And this one I have, I'm waving at you because this is sort of the ideal like size and shape and also um, absence of bug damage that I prefer when I harvest chanterelles. So they do, um, you know, come up oftentimes much smaller and don't get much larger than this little guy right here. Um, and you'll see a couple of interesting features right here that are um, another thing that gives me this confidence about Cantharellus velutinus, the uh, velvety chanterelle yet again, is um, a lot of those mushrooms have sort of an orangey, uh, rusty staining or streaking reaction when you handle them or when they age. And that's good to know because when you take these mushrooms home, sometimes they're gonna look beautiful and they're, you know, this gorgeous sort of, um, you know, organic hen egg yolk color and they're flowery and beautiful and you stick them in the fridge overnight and they come out and they're like these rusty brown things. And that is totally, you know, normal staining. It is not a sign of rot at all. So don't be alarmed and you don't have to get home and like get these, um, you know, like they will last in the fridge for a few days. I'm not gonna get into the uh, details of cleaning and cooking chanterelles. Suffice it to say, I don't mind washing the heck out of them and then um, parboiling them and doing a variety of other things afterward because that allows me to get a lot of this surface level wa uh, water out of them. But there are some people who would take what I just said and say that's heresy and you should uh, you know, throw them in a pan that is dry, no oil, and let them drop their water. And uh, you know, that's a really fun process too because either way, these mushrooms can be quite aromatic. Um, and when I say aromatic, I mean sort of uh, fruity in uh, aroma. And a lot of chanterelles have that feature, not all of them. So let's see what we have going on here. Um, okay. So this one doesn't have any uh, aroma to speak of. Sometimes you will find them and they uh, have sort of a, like almost a peachy fruity sort of thing going on. But with a lot of the chanterelles that I find, it's almost like this fake rubbery juicy fruit aroma. And um, it's really nice when you start to cook it down and it sort of has this like caramelized uh, sweet thing going on. But when you pick them, it can be a little unusual because there is, again, almost um, 
like a note of rubber to it or a note of um, food chemistry that I can't account for. Um, another thing I want to share about these mushrooms is that uh, really beautiful clustering reaction and uh, you oftentimes have them conjoined at uh, the base. And so this is just a really unusual thing that makes our Southern chanterelles such a spectacular thing for me to have discovered, you know, coming from the West Coast many years ago, uh, fresh off of kind of a bad date and some really, really bad mushroom risotto. And being able to encounter these on my uh, first summer here, you know, trying to get used to uh, humid weather and hot weather being mushroom season, and uh, you know, learning what oak trees look like properly, and being able to you know sink my well, sink my teeth, and um, you know, sink my teeth and my effort, energy, and joy into finding and appreciating these mushrooms. So I am starting to drop them everywhere. The storm is coming back. I hope you find a billion mushrooms. If you are anywhere in my area, the chances of that are pretty great. We started. Um, Last month, I think it was a couple of inches behind uh, rainfall wise for the year, and now we are 4.2 inches ahead. So, hopefully, your trees stay erect and you're able to get out into the woods, stay dry as much as you feel is necessary. And we'll talk again soon.